Have you ever met someone on an online dating site and thought, wow, this guy is perfect for me, or she is simply amazing, only to find out they were hiding a deep, dark secret? They plan to vote for Hillary. Freedomlovers.us was created for singles who want to exchange ideas and a love for freedom. People who are looking for solutions to create and defend freedom in the real world and at the same time getting that once in a lifetime chance to find their true soulmate. Whether you are interested in meeting your soulmate, making new friends, networking, or hanging out with that like-minded liberty lover, visit freedomlovers.us. It's the first free dating site and community. So patriots, don't waste your time with other dating sites. Freedomlovers.us is the place where like-minded singles really click. Okay, guys and girls, you're listening to Love, Guns, and Freedom with Luca Zanna on K Talks 1340 AM and on United States to the FM network. I tell you, I love uh, to know about this country. After all, you know, I wasn't born here. I was born in Rome, Italy. And it's funny, you know, because I look a little bit like an Indian, or at least, uh, you know, when I get suntan, I got pretty dark hair, and my skin gets kind of little, you know, Mediterranean, let's put it in this way. And I was lo- joking around because uh, I say, you know, I would like to be an Indian one day. And I tell you why. And forgive me if maybe the Indian is not the right word. I'm going to learn right now with the expert, okay? Uh, I have the excuse. I am from Rome. You want to call him native? I don't know. And then I'll tell you also what I think about the word native. But regardless, I always realize that it would be great to be able to reclaim your sovereignty. Because if you're really sovereign in a sovereign nation, you don't need to submit yourself to, for example, entities like the Treasury or even worse, the private Federal Reserve and the income tax and all this stuff and living like a free human being. That for me exactly the ideal of what America is supposed to be. Now, of course, I'm not a native. Uh, I'm just, a, you know, a naturalized American. But I always fascinated about history. And I tell you something, you know. Let me tell you something. Nothing and nobody is perfect. Humanity is always being created by, let's say, always being between two different type of general people. Uh, People that they want to be left alone and people that want to come there and boss them around. Doesn't matter where you are. Look at history. Rome. I mean, Julius Caesar going around Europe, you know, look at the painting of the conqueror of gold, actual friends, you know, submitting everybody, conquering them and... uh, taking their guns and them slaves. So that's unfortunately, this is nothing to do with the, you know, the slavery in America or the conquering of America. Unfortunately, it's been like humanity. That's why I believe in the right to keep and bear arms because if you want to preserve freedom, you must be armed. If you want to mind your business but be free, you cannot be a sheep, you cannot be a victim. You must be ready to defend yourself. That's my attitude. At the same time, I don't want to go there. I don't want to impose myself on anybody else. Now, I have today with me somebody that uh, I met through a friend a friend that I had on my show many times, Ronald O'Donnell, uh, that I wound a few Democrats that I respect, uh, and it gave me this contact. He's a very interesting man. I need to learn more about him because he's not just a typical native living in a reservation. He's creating his own new identity. So let me ask him more details, and more important, let's try to learn together exactly what happened to this part of humanity uh, called American native or Indians, whatever you want to call them. What exactly happened to them? What's happening to them? Are they really, uh, let's say, human beings, free human beings, or they're somehow in this sort of a limbo that uh, they're living in a prison without uh, bars? Okay, Uh, let me call him right now. His name is Chief Z. Chief, are you there? Yes. Thanks, Luca, for the opportunity. And uh, let me speak. Um, I get get very few opportunities to speak on radio shows. It's been quite a while. Usually it has to do with health or some type of alternative medicine. And since we've been on this venture of creating a new nation states, um, na- native governments, it's been a while since I've had the opportunity, although it's it's good because a lot of things have happened uh, throughout uh, the world and in, in news uh, as far as sovereignty goes, as far as self-determination goes, mm-hmm. and it's it's worth for us to speak about these subjects. First of all, what I'd like to say is, Luca, you're in a you're in a much better position, and you are native. Anybody who has melanated skin is native. Mm-hmm. The fact that you come from a different continent does not make you not native. There's natives that are white. There are two native. Um, 
uh, peoples. One is called the Sami that are up um, up there by uh, uh, Russia and um, I believe it's Finland, Sweden, Norway, mm-hmm. and they have their own country and they're self-determined. They have their own Congress. They've been there for ages and the thing is they have, they're well organized. Then you have people like, uh, well, these are the Sami and you have people that like the, uh, the Uyghur who are much like the, uh, the Tibetans who are forced out of their country and are mm-hmm. being usurped by the Chinese. And, and they've been there for tens of thousands of years. And well, so what we're looking at is groups, smaller groups of people who've usurped other nations. Other nations, peoples have been there for thousands of years and somehow have, have inbred into those native cultures. Once they inbred into them, then they retitle them. Uh, for instance, the nations that we know of, at least in the Americas, aren't really nations of peoples. They're, they're corporate corporate structures. Yes. I mean, for example, was, let me interrupt you one second. For example, exactly. Yeah. America, t- today's America, since 1870-something, is no more an issue. It's a corporation. I mean, probably I'm sure you know about that. And uh, and so may all these entities, you know, I mean, the states and, and the counties, they're all corporations right now. So the identity as, as a nation uh, differently from what we used to have. Now, can I ask you something before we go ahead into all this important information? Where are you sure. located right now? Where are you calling from? Which part? I'm calling from Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Okay. California. Right. And uh, uh, you were born, of course, here. Uh, and uh, which part of, uh, let's say, this United States or maybe a reservation, where you were born exactly? Okay, I'm from Baja, California. Okay. I'm actually, uh, corporately, uh, I'm a Mexican. Okay. okay. I'm just like you. I was running around as a uh, resident alien for, for many years. Okay. And then uh, the person, the title, became a naturalized national. Okay. She became a naturalized citizen mm-hmm. and then became a naturalized national. There's a difference between a U.S. citizen and an American national. Yes. That's an important point. It's very important. Right? Can you please, because, you know, I read about that, but, you know, you seem very well educated and also more articulated than me. Can you just remind the difference between those two concepts? Right. The concept here is when we have to get back to where we were first, Mm -hmm. we come into at least the United States. And this is pretty much true for any nation, at least in the Americas, is that when we repatriate, we expatriate or repatriate into into a nation, we naturalize. And the birth certificate in of itself is actually a naturalization process. Mm -hmm. It just becomes by birth. It's at a different time. But the naturalization process is actually a birthing of a title. It's a birthing of a of an entity. So we're giving. We're only. It seems like publicly, what they sell to us is the U.S. citizen product, mm-hmm. and that product is pay your taxes. You can vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can get a driver's license. You have certain certain privileges and benefits. Mm-hmm. Whereas an American national generally is someone who is born of the territory. Mm-hmm. Right, and here's where I got mixed up because I've been in this since the '70s and the '80s. Wow! In and out of it. being a Mexican, having a foreign birth certificate, and learning about all this stuff, but I really didn't have the standing, I didn't have the the political position or the status until just recently, until 10, 15 years ago. Wow! Interesting. So, so I was in and out of here in uh, in Los Angeles for uh, whether it's alternative medicine, alternative science, alternative politics. It's always been a melting pot for for information and there was a gentleman called uh richard mcdonald mm-hmm. back in the, in the 90s and he was promoting himself because there was no internet back in, back then at least publicly and he was he was uh, in some of the rag magazines like perceptions magazines um promoting himself as being a state citizen and that was interesting to me because he was an ex-sheriff, I believe. Yes. And um, he was basically expatriating out of the U.S. District of Columbia, the federal district, mm-hmm. and he was becoming a state citizen and explained to people how to do that. Mm-hmm. So he drove around without a license, um, no social, no plates. I'm talking 80s and 90s, right? That's quite a while ago. Yes. That was quite interesting to me. So I started going to these meetings at the uh, – a um, place called the Granada Forum, and there were the uh, uh, Jordan Maxwells and all the all the big guys, right? Yes. 
in, into the groups and into the four horsemen, into the prophecies, into the biblical things. And you were, this is pre-2000, so a lot of things were supposedly going to go on. And But basically, it was we were talking about the same thing as the Patriots movements and, and that are going on now are, are, are concerned with. So um, in some of the groups, they were saying, well, you need, a, you need an American birth certificate for all this to work. And I got, uh, shoot, well, I guess I'm not in that group. And I would just didn't, you know, it just didn't go with me because I was really a foreigner, mm-hmm. right? I was, and at that time, I was a resident. And I said, well, okay, so I'll become a, a naturalized citizen. I'll figure it out later. And so uh, I did. I went through the process just like you did. And I retain my uh, Mexican nationality. So I'm a dual national. Okay. I'm no okay. longer a U.S. citizen. Um, I, the, the title emerges from another country, and it's, it still sits there. And I, I am using it as an estate, mm-hmm. using it as a position, as an IRS tax position, mm-hmm. foreign position, to be able to um, derive that nationality from. And that's what ties you back into the native status. If you lose that or if you cut off your lineage, if you cut off your nationality mm-hmm. or, or the blood lineage of who you are, well, that's exactly what the corporate states are doing, the corporate banking cartels, the, the religious groups. Their aim is to cut off our lineage and our blood lineage. Mm. That's what they've done throughout the conquests, right? I'm screwed then. Let me, let me drop you one second because <laughs> let me tell you exactly what happened to me. <laughs> 2005, of course, after seven years of process, I became a naturalized American. And for me, right. it's a very simple concept, okay? I left behind Italy, and mm-hmm. uh, there are beautiful things in Italy, of course, that I'm never going to uh, renegade. You know, it's after all the place where I was born. You know, I like, I like the culture, I like the food, uh, I have my family, everything, it's nice. But the point is, I left Italy for a reason, because in Italy, I didn't have the rights that I knew that I could have here. Of course, now we lost many of those rights, not just the last 18 years, but it, the point is, on paper, at least we have a Bill of Rights. Let me tell you, as much as uh, the Constitution and Bill of Rights may be not perfect, but that's the best document so far that I've seen in the last uh, probably 48 years of life going around the world. So I came to America for that reason. Then when I became a citizen, naturalized, I say, you know what? I cannot uh, put my uh, shoe. There is an expression in Italy. You cannot put uh, uh, your foot in both shoes. you got to pick one. And for me, it was a very easy choice. You know, I am an American and I'm going to symbolically cut my ties. And I did by the, my, myself. Nobody forced me to. And I burned my Italian passport. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that for me was the new identity I want to stay. Now, that's why you come to that, connecting to the point when I say I'm screwed now. Because then, of course, <laughs> I, learned, I learned about the Federal Reserve taking over America and the corporation. Right. And then, of course, the, the president, since probably since FDR, it's all under emergency declaration powers. We are pretty much under martial law. So I like to find a way that I can reclaim my identity of American, in this case, as a sovereign American, because I don't want to go back to being Italian. That's a fact. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I, I like the pasta. I have coffee at home, and I do all the Italian songs if you want, the serenades. Perfect. But it comes down to this. I want to be an American. I'm an American. And the, probably well, maybe I need to become an Indian now to become a real American. Exactly. So let's that find out a way. Me. I give you the floor. That's my point. I want to let you know where I'm coming from. Go ahead. Okay. Well, that's good you put it in that, that way because um, – so I'll give you now our scenario in, in the scenario of what the U.S. government – actually uh, publishes that Mexicans are the largest native group in mm-hmm. the United States. Yes. And yet, and yet, they are domestic and or do not have the rights of most Americans. Even most U.S. citizens, they don't have the rights or they don't take up the rights. Did you know that an undocumented anybody, not just the Mexican, it just so happens that there's a lot of us, um, they come over. We have more rights by not being documented here on this land than by having uh, a driver's license. Oh, I, I know that. And I tell you, on this one, we may disagree. Because, by the way, I'm going to have a guest. It's funny. Today's going to be a great show. Uh, I have on the second part a lady who's, a, who's an American who lives right now uh, pretty much in the south part of Baja, down there. And we're going to have a funny conversation. She's a great friend, by the way. I respect her a lot, like I respect you. But on this, so we may have a little disagreement. And there is a point that I was talking about exactly brings also to that, you know. Uh, let's say foreign nationals like Mexican people, uh, they have uh, probably more rights, as you said, when they do not par- be part of uh, the process. But my right. point is, you know, 
like for example, on the workplace, you know, you come here, like it or not, you may not like the Treaty of Guadalupe, you may not like uh, the selling of Texas and all the Southwest, whatever, that's history that is done. But when you come here, I believe as an American, or at least as a person who wants to integrate in a society, we don't create ghettos. You know, I like in the melting pot. I am that, you know, as I, as I said, after all, I was even born here, I believe in integration. But at the same time, I think, how, what better way to integrate if we are in a place we speak the same language. For example, if I come down to your reservation or to your nation, I don't want to call it a reservation, to your nation, whatever mm -hmm. language you have, my goal is to adapt, to try to integrate. I don't want to sound like an Italian with an accent, okay? I want to sound like uh, you guys. But if you come to America and you look for a job, okay? And that's going to be the topic of the next part of the show. Hopefully, I'm going to have it tonight. Uh, you know, I find that you're already supposed to speak at least the basic English uh, because after all, you're going to work with people that speak English. And uh, why not we speak all English, even with different accents, but we speak in a language that is going to unite us in this reality. And otherwise, you know, we're going to open doors to say, wait a second, yes, I know that the Mexicans, or let's say the people from South America, uh, Spanish speaking, they're probably the number one in the country. But there's also a big group of Germans, uh, Italians, and uh, Russians, Armenians, Chinese, I mean, a lot of other people, they could say, I want that uh, advertisement for job recruiting in my language too. But that's another topic. But I want just to let you know pretty much where I'm coming from on that. Well, keep, keep going, please. Of course. Um, it's important, the aspect of community. We were, and when I say we, I mean the clans or bands that we're, we're uh, connected to. We can't do this without community. You have to integrate into society, even if it's a smaller society. But the importance is that there's a larger number in a, of, of, of people that you're integrating into, whether it's Mexicans going into a white neighborhood or whites going into a Mexican. It doesn't matter. That's what gives us the power as, as a people. It's the uh, unity and diversity that we all have. And that's what makes us a people. Now, when, you, when we identify ourselves as... A, a blood lineage line, it's a little different. And it doesn't mean that we're excluding anybody. It just means that it's for identification purposes. Now, there's nation states, tribal states, that have land, and there's tribal states that don't have land. Mm -hmm. Okay. In, in the case that I talked about before, in the Sami, they've reclaimed their land. And it takes a good part of that north, those four nations, where they have reclaimed their land. In the case of the Tibetans, well, obviously, it's a nation in exile. Yeah. Now, That's where these people... Uh -huh. Where are you exactly now? I know that you have created a, this uh, sort of your own sovereignty state. Um, right. So you were born, of course, uh, you said, as Mexican. Then you came to America. Uh, you follow at least the process to become a naturalized. And then you create this uh, new concept, or at least it's not maybe new, but you created your own reality as a sovereign nation. Where exactly are you located? you have a land to reclaim, or is going to just be like... A, as you said, with the Tibetan, the Tibetan uh, just in transit. Right. It, it is a nation in exile. In exile. The nation in exile means that we can no longer live in our country mm -hmm. or our country has been occupied by a foreign military force. Okay. Does that sound familiar? Oh, yes. Like we are right now. I mean, after exactly. all. Exactly. You know what is funny? Before it was uh, the Indians. Now I think we are all Indians. I tell you, when you start to realize that average American that our rights, they've been gutted down, and we're living under corporate, uh, let's say, fascism, because the union between corporation and government is fascism, according to Mussolini, and you realize that uh, the Bill of Rights, the basic human rights, they're gone. Uh, with the Patriot Act, with the you know, National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, uh, pretty much there is the guiding of every basic uh, due process. I mean, we can be thrown out in, in the dungeon just with the 2012 NDAA, just because they don't like our ideas. Me and you, we could be labeled terrorists just for our freedom of speech and have no access to jury and trial. As you said, yes, we are under a militarization of uh, military occupation. Look what happened to the ranchers, you know. Before it was to you guys, you know, that used to have your own, uh, let's say, uh, tribes or whatever. Now people that have been uh, ranching areas, uh, guess what? Corporate America or whatever, let's say the Clinton or whatever is behind, Harry Reid sold your uh, land to maybe a China corporation or to a Russian mining industry. And if you don't agree with the plan, you don't relocate fast enough, we send you the SWAT team or maybe directly now the army because they can do that. Look, look what's happening right now in North Dakota. I would like to ask you more questions. They're right. using military force 
to suppress, uh, let's say, peaceful protesters. That they are mostly, I think, unarmed, because I know that many natives, and we'll go about that too, they have not the right, not the Second Amendment right, at least in the reservation. So yes, I agree with you. We are right now, all of us, not just the, let's say, the Indians, but we all under uh, some sort of uh, martial law that is still semi-soft, but only soft when it doesn't come to your door. And it's happening more and more. First of all, question, is your position is different from the basic reservation, of, uh, let's say, controlled by the federal government, correct? That's right. Because and I, what ahead. I'd like to do is I'd like to sort of interject a little bit yes. because it's taken us years just to understand what's going on. The history, the history of the, you know, the 1871 corporation that was uh, overlaid on, on, the, uh, on the original one, et cetera, all the history to understand. And then we had to go back to our own country, to Mexico to find out that the Bank of Mexico is the 13th Federal Reserve Bank. Mm -hmm. Those are two of many, many examples of things we that the general public just doesn't understand. And because of its domestic U.S. citizen position, it's not easy to to deal with what looks like uh, martial law, what looks like uh, a government that's oppressing its people, that type of position. Now, have you ever heard of the FSIA? No, help me out. What is that? Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. No, I never heard that. Never, the, for, the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act uh, stipulates that um, when you are a foreign, when you when you declare yourself foreign uh -huh. on a foreign land, you have immunities. Wow. You have certain immunities that are up and beyond that in the, the domestic territory. Mm -hmm. Did you know that when you take an office in wow. the United States hmm. and in Mexico and in most of the countries in America? You are cons you give up your U.S. citizenship. You are within the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. You wow. become a foreign agent. Wow. What does that mean? What that means is that by being foreign to the domestic, by being foreign to the to the states, by being foreign even to Washington D.C., mm -hmm. you have Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act. So what's happening with the Native Americans? Well, long ago, each of these these tribes these um, officially recognized tribes, right, for the Bureau of, of Indian Affairs and Bureau of Land Management that are now handling their, their land, their, their, they've been positioned as having a bit more rights to use over land that's, that's rightfully not theirs. Mm -hmm. It's not theirs. What happens is when they come into treaty or an agreement or a contract or a compact with the federal government, the government overlays a jurisdiction on top. Mm -hmm. It overlays a statutory jurisdiction on top of the land. Yes. And that's what it utilizes to give the, the Indians its reservation. We, we, we say reservation is not unlike the Federal Reserve. Yes. It's a reserve. It's an area, a contingent area that's encircled where certain rules within that area are different than the rules outside of the area. Have you ever heard of um, the international trade zones? Yes, I heard about those. And just to, of course, I want to ask you more, but before I want to go ahead, you know, every time we bring something on the air, guys, I like to always double check. And meanwhile, Chief Z was talking. I mean, this is amazing. The Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act, FSIA of 1976. It is a United States law codify a title 28, 1330, 1332, and blah, blah, blah. So this is incredible stuff because, you know, knowledge is power. I believe it always, of course, is followed by action. You can know everything you want, but if you don't follow up, it's going to be still nothing. So this is important stuff. I'm excited and I want to thank you because, as I said, this show it gave me the opportunity to learn stuff that not things and topics that normally I have no idea. So please continue. This is a, I would like to everybody out there thinking that we are just talking about Mambo Jumbo, the foreign sovereign Immunities Act of 1976 is a U.S. state law. I mean, excuse me, United States law, federal law, okay? So that's very important piece. Please continue. This is very, I think you got something really good going. Keep going, please. Okay. Okay, so Luca, the, the, the importance here is I'm trying to sort of, and it takes a while, but I'm trying to give you a, a Sesame Street version. Yes. A, the very quick version of the, giving the scenario of private versus public. Mm -hmm. And the private has to do with international private law of foreign nations and foreign nation states. They have agreements between themselves. They recognize between themselves as them being sovereign. 
Now, typically, when we are not titled, I'm talking before the birth certificate, we are considered nation states from the Vatican. Mm -hmm. We are considered independent nations and nation states. Wow, the Vatican. From there emerges tribes, blood lineages, etc. Wow. Once the birth certificate comes in from any state, we are then um, reduced or truncated into a state government and, and uh, entrusted into a particular state, doesn't matter where it is in the world. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, that title of which we um, adhere ourselves to physically, it limits our ability to be able to to move, for instance, to be able to acquire the rights. So think of, um, we have a term in, in Mexico, which is called hacienda. It may be similar in, in Italian. Mm -hmm. You'll see that later on, we have a lot of similarities in Italian and, and Spanish. Um, both in the terminologies, but Hacienda is the name of our taxing authority. Mm. And if you translate Hacienda into English, it means plantation. Yeah, plantation okay. is right. Okay, so like, we are, think of us being an alien ant farm, yeah. and that the they were started as smaller plantations, which turns into bigger plantations with uh, of people, of slaves. The slavery has just become more administrative. Mm -hmm. It's become codified into accounts. Yeah, And these accounts are what we are identified with. So with each piece of a documentation that we have with an, an EIN number, a social security number, a birth certificate, uh, every single the driver's license, these, these derivatives off of these numbers and titles, it places us more further and further into slavery, further and further into the public. And why you're in the public is an entire set of rights and privileges and benefits that we think we have but the reality is that we're living on a plantation you're right and that plantation has masters you're right so going back to the tribal nations now all the tribal nations that are federally let, recognized let, let me stop you one second ollie this is important because i, I want to remind uh, all the people who are listening here especially in america okay before 1913 okay uh this nation did not have a system based on this plantation because that's exactly you said we are now slaves that we think we are free so we can produce more for the masters because after all master understands that if uh, it takes everything from us we're not gonna work but if we leave us a little bit and give us the illusion that we are free we're gonna work even more that's the reality but it's even worse because when you were a slave and i tell you for example during the roman empire okay you know romans they used to have slaves like not just the romans like all the population in europe whatever there's always somebody wanted to rule somebody else but with the romans normally slaves they were taken care they were fed and they also free health care now in america for example since 1913 we are corporate slaves we have of course to pay income tax that we didn't have to pay before because uh, you know the story, the Federal Reserve didn't exist. And of course now, not only we had to pay, you know, whatever they think is our fair share, they of course guess pretty much just to pay the interest or the debt of this monstrosity called Federal Reserve. But then of course we had to take care of ourselves. And of course at that point, as you said, we also in this sort of, of, of a coding number called social security, that for me it's another form of slavery. Because when I work and that's my labor, my money from my labor, and somebody, like in this case, the government, have the uh, power to take part of that money without my consent, that for me is called extortion. And yes, at that point is the definition of slavery. We have no more control of your body, of your resources, of your time, in this case, your labor. So I agree with you. Right now we are, let's say, a mo much more sophisticated way of a plantation without bars, without cages, but we are still under their corporate control. So please continue. Good. So <clears throat> we were talking about account numbers, and this is important because if you think about it, and this is generally the position, and I'd like to distinguish us from the patriot groups and the those so-called the, the 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 SC, the the forbidden SC, the sovereign citizen word, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes they try to they try to accuse us of being those. It's all, everything, the furthest thing from that name or from a patriot. Why? Because if you are going to be sovereign and immune, you are foreign. You mm. are not domestic. I see. It's the system's way of identifying certain individuals that are against the plantation's rules. Yeah. So the way that they tag us, the way that they, not us, but the physical body. Or what, and the problem here is the psychology behind it. We still think that 
we are somehow attached to those documents. We're mm-hmm. attached to the identifications. We're attached to the socials. Those are just instrumentalities, and they have their owners. So the way that we've been able to position ourselves out of that public and into the private is by retaking those accounts, starting from the birth certificate, mm. going to the Social Security, and in our case, capturing the title and the rights to the uh, investment contracts that are like our national national uh, naturalization certificates. You know that that's a security, right? Yes. And I can ask you a question. So you don't have uh, social security and you don't have, uh, I mean, I'll use, what did you do for yourself? I mean, I'm just curious. Okay. So um, the process is, which we can't go into detail because this is public. Yeah. Um, there are certain documents that, that you place out there, which are non-disclosure. Mm-hmm. And the reason for that they're non-disclosure is because they're, by placing certain information out there, you can damage the public, mm. believe it or not. You can damage. And I am a hardened believer that this is for everybody. Everybody has the rights to everything consciously, all the information and all the rights. However, there's certain um, contracts and intellectual information that is theirs. It's the elites. It's the banking elites information. Mm -hmm. That is how they control the masses. Yes. Now, when you become into the private, when you become an American national, when you've taken back your accounts, sooner or later you realize there's no money. Mm-hmm. Sooner or later you'll realize that, oh my God, we are living in a farm. We are living with sheeple. We are living in a place where people love their televisions, they love their sports, and they love being um, entertained, and that's all they live for. And so that there's a market for them. And we, at least, is our nation in exile, are not out there to waken the masses. The only thing that we're doing is we'll set, we're self-determining ourselves. Those very few that want to wake up, take back their ownership of their economical energy, their spiritual energy, and place it back into order so that we can discharge all the dead or debt that's in the world for ourselves, for our family, for our posterity, just like the people who formed the United States. Yes. Let me... Exactly what they did. Yes. And, you know, I tell you something. I start to understand now, at least I, I follow the basic concept. You know, your foundation is the, fo- the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act of 1976. Am I right or wrong? I mean... Well, it's not a foundation. It's actually one of the... The pilots. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of no. the, the basic... You know, we have using some sort of a logic. We're using their sure. laws to, let's say, free ourselves, right? Or at least right. we use the... You know, we don't want to go completely... Okay. I mean, honestly, sometimes I'm at a point in my life, I say, you know what? Screw you. I want to be free. Like our founding fathers wanted to, let's say... Uh, get away from the king i want to get away from this sort of monstrosity that completely is no more a republic it is no more uh, for, for the people this is just an illusion i think we need to take it back but i think you got an interesting point because you're using their laws That's to right. reclaim your sovereignty and i think yes. uh, there's a lot of inf- i was reading me while you were talking i was reading more about this foreign sovereign immunities act of 1976 it's a very good point there now tech, so- there is also a point though unfortunately you know very well you can go out, you can bring all the logic and all the laws uh, in court. Mm-hmm. And uh, at the end of the day, judges are pretty much instrument of the power. I mean, they work for the state, okay? They're not uh, impartial members. They are just, most, many of them, they've been appointed by political uh, hacks or the government itself, okay? And the same story, of course, is not just the judges, but the whole system. Uh, at the end of the day, I think Mao Zedong said, uh, you can get power only through the, I mean, the political, excuse me, the political power comes out of uh, the barrel of a gun. The bottom line, there are people out there, activists for different topics. Like, for example, was uh, Peter Schiff that uh, he challenged the IRS and he brought, he brought in, in court, you know, constitution, Supreme Court cases. And the judge says, I don't care. I don't want to listen to that. So at the end of the day, you have very good points, I believe, and at least you may bring some logic and some laws on your side. But when they come out with a SWAT team and they say, (laughs) sorry, you're driving without driver license, we're going to tase you first and then we talk later because that's pretty much what they do. What you going to do? That's my point, you know, because you start in a good education point. By this point, are you really sure that you want to drive without driver license in the middle of Los Angeles? And when they pull you over, maybe they don't like you, your attitude, they may shoot you before they even ask, talk to you. I mean, that's my right. point. 
uh, how can well, we no, can do that? I, I didn't say I don't have a driver's license. I'm mm -hmm. just saying that that was the person who started us. Yes. We've gone light years beyond that in understanding how the system works. And if you understand that they've made laws for the sheeple, for their farm animals, mm -hmm. which are the domesticality, which are the U.S. citizens or any citizen that's out there, and they've made loopholes. They've made certain laws just for them yes, because they yes. had to invent a way to get out of the system. They you're can't right. just enslave everybody. I would include them too. You're right. You're right. right. This so, is so important. This information is so important. Please, people out there, let me be sure you understand. This is not like a, a mambo jumbo. I did a little research before even I was talking to you, Chief Z. There is so much things that we do not know. And this is not just things in, 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 in the conspiracy books. These are directly, as I just told you before, just little piece of information out of the, the code, okay? We have probably 99.9% .9 of the average American has no idea because I didn't. And normally I'm a pretty educated person. At least I try to learn. The Foreign mm -hmm. Sovereign, Sovereign Immunities Act, I have no idea till I talk to you today. So that's an important piece. Oh, that's one of many, many things out there, both in, in national and international private law, um, that's either at the Hague and treaties that these uh, cartel nations have put together, these banking institutions have put together. We are banks. Yes, yes. When you come to the private, we are banks. Our energy is there, and it's ecclesiastical. Yes. Uh, the, the Vatican recognizes human beings as being batteries, as being the potent first charge yes. of energy that's out there. Yes. This is why it's human trafficking. You're right. You're this right. is why it's all hu about human trafficking and the machination of human energy in its different facets. Okay, listen to now, me. I have a dream, okay? Like uh, Martin Luther King, I have my own dream too, okay? Mm -hmm. I would like to live in a nation where... You know, even it wasn't perfect during the founding fathers of this country, but I tell you, after the Declaration of Independence, people can say, yeah, there was still slavery. That's true. But there were slaves anywhere. It no, wasn't just America. At least in the piece of paper, they try for a moment to say, we need to get to that point where all humans are created equals, okay? That would be the idea. Where we are equals, okay? We are no under corporate control. We have basic natural laws that they are, for me, of course, enunciated, at least expressed in the Bill of Rights, okay? at least the first 10 Bill of Rights, the original Bill of Rights, that I'm not uh, like, a, like a cow to milk at the end of the year uh, to pay for some corporate uh, banking system like, you know, the Federal Reserve. Like, uh, by the way, listeners, I'm not saying things that they are anar anarchists. This is what America used to be before 1913. You didn't have to pay income tax, okay? Because we uh, were able to print our own money without the help, I've uh, been sarcastic here, of a private cartel of banks that they print money out of thin air and then they ask the charges for the interest and we became automatically slaves just there. I don't want to have a social security. I want to choose how I can choose my own retirement. I don't want to be forced. And I would like to be a place, of course, not only we don't pay income tax like you used to be here, but we can carry guns in self-defense, respecting each other's, and we have rights until we do not infringe on somebody else's rights. So I'd be able to drink, eat, and smoke whatever I feel without government harassment, always, of course, in the respect of people's others, you know, let's say safety. Can we do that? How can we do that? I'm ready to join. Good. That's, that's, I want you to think about something and think about what the elite are doing, whether you call them reptilians, whether you call them extraterrestrials and yeah. or demons, their, their premise and the way they've got positioned themselves into being different than the masses mm -hmm. is that they focus on bloodline lineage, on their history, on culture, on where they come from. And that's exactly what they do. They cut that off from the public. Mm. They put us into a position to that that we need to somehow be subservient and give part of our energy to them because we have owners. We all have owners if you have a social security card. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you can't use it. It doesn't mean you have to separate yourself from it. The only difference is that you now be, control it. You put yourself in the position of where they're at now. Mm. And that's done by declarations, by affidavits, by notices, and the, well, there's a whole array of things that are done, which and those are those trade secrets that people, you know, talk about in the in the private. Now, I want you in particular to think about. Now, you didn't give up your Italian nationality, did you? I did. Did you expatriate? I I I, I told them to the um, to the embassy that. Uh, you know, I give up my citizenship um, in Italy, and I'm just an American only. But maybe I can be adopted by uh, 
I don't know. In Indian, in Indian nation, you know, they, I was reading an article. Don't make you laugh, but it's true. I guess somebody sent it to me. Uh, you know, there is an article that says, "Are you a Native American? Do you have a letter M as Mary on your palm?" I have a big, <laughs> yeah. I have a big M. I can paint an even bigger one. Yeah, they one say they're Mexicans too because okay. of the M. Yeah, so I have an M on my hand. So I, I, I'm, I'm shopping around to find a, a tribe that uh, you know allows me to exercise my basic rights as a human being without paying income <laughs> tax to the Federal Reserve, and I can carry my gun and I'm ready to move in. Okay, do you still have an Italian passport? Or no. Italian birth certificate? I, I, uh, birth, Italian birth certificate. I mean, I have the birth certificate, but I... Okay, uh, that, I get... That's all you need. That, you can you can go to any embassy or any consulate that's Italian and acquire an Italian passport. I don't want it, man. They are worse than the freaking... Uh, I mean, <laughs> wait, a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You think the, okay. the, the but, is bad? Oh, uh, see, you know, here's the problem right here. Tell right me. here is the exact problem. You th everybody thinks that by having a piece of paper, okay. it somehow attaches them to a corrupt government, to something that's horrible. Think about us for a second. Yeah, you you've seen what our government's like, right? Yeah, uh, it's not our government because I don't consider ours. Exactly. But what's attached to that? Would I really want to be connected to a Mexican government? To everything, all the head chopping and yeah. and, and bandito yeah. and history, I don't. Yeah. Has nothing to do with it. All right has nothing to do with you being connected to that. Right. What it has to do with you need to position yourself as being foreign. Right. And by being foreign, you connect yourself with a ancient bloodline lineage. All right. We all have it. We all have it. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll follow. I'll follow I'll, I'll, using I'm open. I'm open-minded guy. I'm going to be open. <laughs> okay, listen. I, I'll follow listen, your listen tips. Go okay. ahead. Once you're in, it, it doesn't take too much. It, okay. it's, it's a little bit of documentation. No I'll do it. I'll a, do it. Go a ahead. little bit of, of have to having to deal with the IMF, IRS. Yes. You can walk into a bank oh God. with a foreign passport yes. and no social security and get a bank account. I don't want a bank account. <laughs> okay. You can get a trust bank account. Okay. All right. It's not attached, does not attach your physical body or you as surety, as a guarantee to that account and it will be tax exempt nobody will bother you from those are things that only the people who handle themselves in the private do okay it's no longer into okay. the public you're no longer responsible all right but um, it has to do with you knowing that you're foreign you're not of this corporate nation okay not of this corporate town no so, if, it's just something, to, it's a seed for you to think about. I will think about it in case you get a letter or a postcard from Guantanamo, you know, it didn't work <laughs> out right. <laughs> I'm going to go around, by the way, I have, I have the FSIA, whatever, <laughs> bang. Yeah, they sent me about far away yeah, anyway, right? Paisano, shut up and go back to Guantanamo. That's where they're going to, but I, I agree, Lister, we got to try to learn and experiment things because the reality is this one. Right now, we are no more in America. We are completely all in a reservation. It's a plantation. And exactly. I think even the average America start to understand it. And uh, I don't know if we're going to be able to take back, uh, you know, the federal government. Honestly, I don't think in this lifetime for myself, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I hope to be wrong. At the same time, I think there is a way we need to live now life as free human beings. And I think uh, what you're doing is great. At least you try to find ways using their system, using their laws. And, uh, and hopefully more people get together because at the end of the day, when you have more people informed, also comes also to a point that we reach critical mass and uh, we can, they cannot control us all. They cannot smash us all. They cannot kill us all. That's the bottom line. Now, are you planning to have a physical place that we can get together and put some walls maybe and uh, say, we are here, this is the new nation, we live free as a human beings, can you leave us alone uh, with some sort of, I don't know, maybe some uh, mumbo jumbo legality that can leave us alone without being smashed like, uh, you know, uh, the tanks uh, in, uh, uh, you know, the situation with uh, Waco, Texas. I mean, can we get something going on like that? Pretty okay, look, I'm two, two things on that. Yeah. I, I just saw a thing, and it's, it's only two days old. It's really interesting on Facebook. Yeah. Um, one of our nation's state is called Asgarta, mm -hmm. and it's named after Aslan, A-Z, right, which right. is the ancient mythical city of the Aztecs. Asgard, that. which is a mythical city in the sky yeah. of yeah. the of Odin, Odin, the Odinism and that whole northern tradition. Yes, I like that. And, I like that. I know that. and I know that. Agartha, which is the hollow earth of Shambhala, mm -hmm. which are very ancient concepts. Okay. It seems that like a group of scientists have caught on to the idea to have 
a space nation. Oh, gosh. They're building a space empire uh, out there, a satellite. Okay. And they're building a nation out there. Just want to put that out there. It's called Asgardia. Okay. okay. Listen, okay. I'd now, be happy to find a little bit of desert around here. I mean, we don't need to go all the way well, to the start. I mean, uh, of course. I just want to put that out there yeah. because right. it's a concept. Okay. The other concept is, okay, so you have a group of Indians in, in Arizona called the Tohono O'Dam. Okay. I don't know if you've heard of them. No. Tohono O'Dam are down there by oof, east of Yuma and up into Gila Bend, okay. down to Tucson. There is a very large group there. But very few people know that their brothers and sisters are right over the border. Wow. They're okay. the Papago. Okay. You have another group called the Kumeyaay Nation, mm. which are down in San Diego mm. and up through uh, up through, through Riverside. There's 13 bands of them. Okay. Did you know that there's five more bands on the south side? No. I had no idea about this. So same my, bloodline, but, same brothers, same 10,000-year lineage, same people mm. before the border went across. Now, question is, you know, the, the, the average uh, reservation, or let's say tribe, uh, let's say, for example, here in this area, Moave County, okay, Arizona, and there is uh, the Wallapai, okay? They, mm -hmm. They're living the reservation. I know when I go through Peach Spring, I don't even want to stop for a pee because I, I'm afraid to stop there because I know that automatically the Bill of Rights ends and normally, you know, I carry guns on me and I don't want to be in that spot that even to have a gun in the car, if I stop sure. outside the Route 66, I would be in big trouble because they, technically I'm under federal jurisdiction. And of course, you know, on the, on the federal land, you, have, you are a slave. They don't give you the Bill of Rights. You cannot carry guns, not for the natives, but also not for the, even the passengers. I mean, the, the, the transitional like me, you know. Good so, observation. That's good that you say that because now you're talking about overlays of government, mm -hmm. statutory overlays. And that's what I'm getting to with these two nations. Yeah. On the American side, these two groups have... Treasury cards, casinos, yes, lots of money they're taking care of. They don't need anything. Exactly. The same people are living in trailers at best yeah. in Baja California and mm -hmm. Sonora Desert. Yeah. Why is that? Because, because one group is under a nation that has lots of money and is, and is giving them benefits and privileges to a certain point, and the other one has no representation at all, not even by the nation. Yep. That's where we're at. If one nation can recognize one group with that blood lineage, the same blood lineage is on the other side. The only way you can self-determine that group that's already determined is by giving them flags, uh, seals, family crests, and self-determining. That's where our nation is. Mm -hmm. It straddles both sides of the border. Yeah. And also, I think, another important thing, you know, uh, as I said before at the beginning of this conversation, when you submit yourself under the federal control, okay? Mm -hmm. to, to keep you pacified, to keep you under their control, they also uh, make you a slave. They pay you, they give you the casinos, they give you the medical care, they give you, of course, a bunch of vaccines, they're gonna sterilize you, all this stuff. But at the same time, they give you the basic, enough money to be alive, and you don't need to work, and uh, in this way, they control you, like a prison without bars. Uh, yeah. I don't want that. As I said, you know, if I was a native here, like uh, an Indian, I want to be independent. I want to have my own sovereignty. I want to say to the federal government, leave me the heck alone. I will make my own money. I don't need you. Just give me a place that I deserve and I have the right and I can create my own prosperity and I have my own set of rules and laws. That's what I think uh, if I, you know, would be as, as, as an India I would like to do because I don't want to be yeah, in a reservation you that you know the only thing you need to do is become an American national and not a US citizen okay so when you cross the border from Baja California or Sonora into the US Homeland Security looks at you they look down look at the screen and they go <laughs> okay American national he has some rights okay and then when you're operating in Arizona what documents do you show in Arizona uh, normally, I have the basic Arizona driver license. That's what I do. Okay, that's where that's where you become the slave. Yeah, you need to have an Italian passport with an Italian or a Mexican driver's license oh, Mexican and drive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know how many people are getting? Oh my God! The, the person you're about to uh, interview, I can guarantee you, has a Baja California driver's license. Wow! And she can she or anybody who's living down there as a so-called expatriate, can cross that border with no problem because that's one jurisdiction. Mm. It's the port. 
It's a dimensional jurisdiction. Once you cross that port, you identify yourself as foreign, mm -hmm. not domestic. I see. And you have every right to. You now become an Italian national with any type of documentation other than a domestic identification. And you, but you need to do it correctly. Okay. And, you know, I want to be back to my point. You know, I really love to be an American. That's why I came here. But the problem right now, as I said, I'm thinking about all this information, not because I don't want to be an American, because I want to be a real American, what America used to be. Now we are no more Americans. We are corporate slaves. So that's right. That's, you know, this is at least for, I don't speak for you, of course. You know, I speak for myself. This is my point of view. And uh, I'm really open minded because I know for sure right now we are no Americans. The land of the free, homo the brave, I'm sorry, we are land of the fee, homo the slaves. And I can give you many other things. You know, I talk about this all day long on the show. The moment that uh, the government claim, claims ownership over your body and they tell you, if you do not put a sl the belt, a seat belt slave, I will fine you. I mean, you think that's freedom? I mean, what, what are, am I doing to others? Just because I don't put a seat belt? That's for me, like uh, giving up your rights on your body. The same story with the helmet uh, for the motorcycle. Don't get me wrong. If I have a motorcycle, I do put the helmet, but it's my choice. And the right. same story on property rights, you know. I mean, you oh, you own a house. You know, you, you do not own a house. You do not own anything. You're just the idiot pay the rent so they can make money to create more corporate control around you. I mean, the idea is uh, the, the property tax is insane. I mean, you know, what they, know, they can do at this point, the property tax on, 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 on your couch. Why not on your shoes? After all, you're using the, the street every day you walk over it. Okay. I mean, <laughs> it, it'll get there, believe me. We're, oh, yeah. we're on carbon and air. Yeah, and now I they're going to put the, the tax on the fact that you fart or you breathe, you know, the carbon right. tax. Are you insane? I mean, this is, a, I mean, they're putting taxes on cows just because now in California, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Right. Uh, just because uh, there was J Governor Brown, the latest uh, piece of, 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 of garbage that he signed, uh, you know, they put the carbon tax on cows because they're first, they create global warming. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, it, 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 that's a good way to you have to remember that the it's not that they're doing all these things on us that's the first thing you need to uh, change your your paradigm shift yeah. to they're not doing this on us they're doing it on the joinder or the titles or the rights that they have that we identify with those titles mm -hmm. the minute you do not identify yourself with those titles and create take that ownership and i'm not saying you can run out there with a with a gun everywhere and with no driver's license you have to abide by public policy mm -hmm. if you're going to be in the farm in their farm yeah. you have to abide by certain basic rules that doesn't mean you have to do their exact rules you can work yourself around them and still be within the law yeah you can still be under law. Yeah, I, you know what I like about Arizona. One thing, you know, there are a lot of things, of course, that I like to change, and it's not perfect. It's still a state made by humans and corruptible. But the one thing I tell you, at least, is still the basic idea: uh, as a human being who has no criminal record, or at least is not danger to society, you are free to buy and purchase, of course, and carry any weapon without a government piece of paper called license or permit. Okay. That's the way I think a free human being, a law-abiding person, and when I say law-abiding, you know, it's, uh, today it's very easy to break the law. If you look at their laws, I'm talking about natural laws, okay? No, sure. no endangering other people, not being violent unless for self-defense. So that's my point. And that's a good start. But of course, the idea is uh, like this one, we should be able to keep all our rights in a way that could be, uh, in my opinion, recreate and regain our freedoms. So I tell you, do you have any idea pretty soon to have maybe a, a physical location where you can start to do your, let's say, your implementation of, of your project? Well, we're not really worried about the land. The land has been occupied for over 500 years yeah. by foreign military powers. The, the land that we're on right now that we're more occupied, just like you say, Arizona. You're living in Arizona. It doesn't matter if it becomes Chinese or if it, you like that area because the laws are conducive yeah, to but, what you like. Yeah, so it's really the land is not as important to us as our bodies. Mm -hmm. We need to self-determine us as individuals first All right. so All that right. our members in our nation are in the private, are nationals of whatever government you want to be, but they're completely private. They have re regained their titles. They've regained their certificates. And now they're able to operate in commerce out in the world. Now we can talk about regaining and, and repatriating uh, lands 
not as slaves, not as domesticalities, because that's what's happening with the nations that are recognized, is they're recognized up to a certain degree. They're only giving a, a particular amount of rights mm -hmm. within a certain jurisdiction. That's not really rights. Listen, do you have a website where people can maybe learn more about what you're doing, or maybe I ask you questions, or maybe have you on their shows, or whatever? I mean, right. how, how can they reach you out? Yeah, it's A-Z-G-A-R-T-A dot S-P-R-U-Z dot com. Okay, say one more time, please. A-Z-G-A-R-T-A dot S-P-R-U-Z dot com. Perfect. Listen, I want to say, first of all, thank you for your time. Even this was, of course, just a little glimpse, a glance of what we can start is a journey. I mean, I'm going to start to study more now about this uh, uh, piece of information that we were talking about, the Immunity Foreign Act or whatever it is. I mean, there is so much. And as I said, we need to start somewhere because I really believe in the next few months, I've already reached the bottom line. I don't believe that uh, what we're facing right now is going to be worse. But yes, the worst has to come. So we got to find a way, hopefully peaceful, to reclaim our own freedoms as human beings. And in this case, you know, I, as I said before, we're all going to become Indians. It's not just on, on more people in the reservation. We are all now a minority in the sense we're all slaves. That's the bottom line. And uh, finally start to, you know, first they came for the Indians, then they came for the black. Now they came in for the ranchers. Now they're coming for the Christians. Now they're coming for what? Uh, the people that don't want two vaccines. I mean, it's all we're going to become sooner or later, get it, get it all. So listen, thank you again. I would like to have you probably back in the future to give me more details about things like that. And I sure. want to say, you know, first of all, listener, as I said, this show, anything goes. There are no restrictions. We talk about things that normally in the average commercial radio station, they would put you probably in prison just to think about it, okay? Right. We, we can talk about everything here, but I need your support because I'm not going to relate on corporate sponsor when we talk about things that normally the sponsor will look at me. Are you freaking crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm here as a free mind to learn and to also use my mind to discern what is good and what is bad. And I ask you the same to do for you guys. You know, get this information, learn about it, more important, make your own decisions. Now, if you want to support the show, there is many. There are many ways. One way, it's easy. You can go to www.zanna.us. You can download any of my songs for just 99 cents. And if you like coffee, organic coffee, you can go to zannacoffee.com. In doing so, you will support the show, and more important, you will support freedom of speech on this show. Thank you very much. Chief Z, I really love you and I appreciate your time, okay? Thank you, Luca. Thank you. Don't Please. go away. One second, Ollie, stay there. Meanwhile, I want to say everybody else, thank you very much for listening this week and ready for uh, next week, God's willing, hopefully to be around, and we'll talk with more guests. I wish I had more time. I was going to bring my friend from Baja, California, um, this American veteran, she used to be also on my show. She's been on my show in the past. And we'll go next week, hopefully, okay? We will talk about uh, advertising another language besides English when you want to get a job. Interesting talk. Thank you very much.